Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have got a first impressions to do for you. I've actually been meaning to do this for like two days. It's been such a crazy week this week. June in my family is a, a crazy month. <laughs> we have like nine birthdays, a couple anniversaries, and just all kinds of stuff the whole month. So it's just my wife's birthday and then Father's Day and then my dad's birthday and my mother-in-law's birthday. My birthday is tomorrow. There's like constant stuff going on. So what that means is I've been meaning to show you guys some of my first impressions and a little bit more details on the Finch 1929 since I opened it up and I'm finally able to do it. I'm uh, just getting started on my hike today. Figured I'd talk while I walk. So this is obviously the 1929. This happens to be the one in Coca-Bolo, which if you saw my unboxing, you'll see I got two of these, one for me and one to give away. Finch sent two, because they're fantastic people over there. So the one that will be in my giveaway is the carbon fiber one. And I just, it was really a toss up which one to go with. And I decided to go with Coca Bolo because I don't really have any other wooden knives. I've got a few carbon fiber knives right now. So just something different. And I feel with this kind of traditional Barlow pattern, it makes sense. It feels, feels like a modern traditional, which is what this knife is going for. Sorry, that's super bright, isn't it? So anyway, this is the third model from Finch. And I have the other two as well. I have the Runtley, that was my first Finch. I got lucky and was able to get the yellow belly version of that knife, the one that's bright yellow G10. And then I just recently got my Tycuna as well. Finch sent that one along out of their own kindness and generosity. I've been having a lot of fun trying that one out. There's gonna be a testing video on that one soon. I might test this one along with it actually, we'll see. And uh, both the Runtley and the Takuna have been fantastic small knives. I, uh, if you aren't familiar with my carry patterns and how I typically EDC almost every day, I have a primary knife on me and a secondary. Whoa, that is crazy. I think that's a possum carcass. Hold on one second. Let me turn this around real quick and show you what I just stumbled upon. This thing is stinky and smelly. It's got some gnarly teeth on it, but look at the tail. That's what's making me think it's an opossum tail. It's got like scaly rat tail on it. Gross. Anyway, now that the possum is out of the way, what was I saying about these knives? The, the Runtley and the Tycuna have both been really impressing me because I carry secondary knives every day. So it's nice for me to have a few options of larger knives that I carry as a primary and a few options of smaller knives that I carry as a secondary. Now, gosh, now there's a helicopter. So both the Tycuna and the Runtley fit super well into my rotation as secondary knives. Even when I just had the Runtley, I carried that a lot as a secondary because it was one of the only knives I have that not only fits in like the fifth pocket of pants that have five pockets, but was also just probably the most comfortable one in that spot. And because of its size and profile and shape, it's just, it carries really, really well. And it's still a lot of fun. It's a flipper on bearings and yeah so now the tycuna again flipper on bearings nice and small that one doesn't fit in a fifth pocket but it's still small enough to carry as a secondary and the grind on it the blade on that one it's just really exceptional for actual use i've been finding anyway now there's the third one the uh the third musketeer if you will and the 1929 is obviously aesthetically 
pretty different from the other two. You can tell just by looking at it. This one has bolsters. This one particularly has the wooden scales, but it comes in a carbon fiber option as well, which is not an option. Neither <laughs> of the, the Finch or the Tycoon can be had in Cocobolo or in carbon fiber yet. Then there's also a Jade G10 version, but on all three versions, you get these really nice satin bolsters, which match really well with the clip, the hardware, the crest on this one, instead of being the glow in the dark, um, kind of like coated, it's almost like a plastic covered, like laminated crest that you get on the other ones because it's got the glow material in it. This one is just this really nice, like all metal, like engraved, crest and it's really really cool looking i feel like this one feels the fanciest of the three which is funny too because this one is actually the least expensive of the three models all of them i believe are right below the 150 mark or at least the the tycoon and the runley are and this one is only 115 bucks which isn't a budget knife but it's almost a budget knife. And I guess it depends on who you're talking to, but my standards of what I consider a budget knife would be like probably under 70 or 80 bucks. Once you get above that, it's like just above what I would consider a budget knife. And this is kind of in that range where it's not cheap and it's certainly not like cheap in its construction either, but cost wise, it's not cheap, but it's also, you're getting 154 CM, which is, a good to go blade steel. I like 154 CM, especially on a little small traditional like this. If you're looking at like traditional slip joints and stuff, you're going to see a lot of like 440C and even 440A and like blade steels that are really quite subpar. And so this one being 154 CM on this little thin, really useful blade shape, I, I dig it. And then you're getting real Cocobolo or carbon or JG10 if you're into that. You're getting a bolster lock, which their other models are liner locks. This one, gosh, it's so bright. Let me find a, a shadier spot real quick to hunker down. Here we go. <laughs> this one being a bolster lock is inherently gonna be a, a different feel, a different lockup, a different, uh, it's different from a liner lock. And so the way it's done too is really, really nice. The way it sets into that, bolster or i guess into the the scale over the bolster the fitment is fantastic it works really really well another thing that i'm really impressed with is so if this was like a 300 hundred dollar knife i'd be looking for absolute perfection in a knife this size at 300 bucks but at 115 dollars i feel like i wasn't expecting it to be as well constructed as it actually is. Like looking around the edges of this knife, the way that the scales meet up on the frame, it's really, really good. No gaps, no voids, nothing funky happening. Even where it meets the bolster, there's no gap, no void, nothing. It feels smooth to the touch, like it's all one material. That's not very common on knives that do bolsters that are this inexpensive. Um, yeah, I tried not to talk too much about price on a lot of knives. I'd rather focus on the quality and how well done they are, but it's certainly part of the equation on, on any knife. It, the value has to be, uh, it has to make sense to me for me to be in on a knife. But yeah, this is really, the fitment on everything is really good. The lockup, there's no play side to side, front to back, like zero. It's a very solid lockup. The actual lockup with the lock bar on the tang is excellent to me. It's not too early, not too late. You're getting a good amount of traction without being like totally interfaced. So over time, even you've got some, some room to play, but it just, it functions really well. The detent, nice and crisp. You give it a good solid little thwack to open it. It's very satisfying and fun to play with, especially for its size. I find a lot of really small flippers oftentimes, they just don't have the function like larger flippers do. Obviously you don't have as much weight for gravity to pull that blade down, but even so, that I can kind of shake this shut, these bearings function really, really well. 
The way that the stop pin rides is actually really cool too. It's a track milled into the frame and then the stop pin is actually on the tang of the blade itself. So the stop pin moves as the blade moves and then it rides until it gets to the end of the track. It's just all of the little things that I keep noticing about this knife are impressing me more and more. The way that the action works, the way the fit and finish is really dialed, the way it carries, this is gonna be my the, the most important part of this for me because secondary knives, for me to want to carry them, have to be really comfortable in pocket. And they have to be able to fit into spaces that I don't expect my primary knives to. So this one carries even slightly better than the Runtley. And the Runtley was in my top three in the secondary knives video that I did recently because it's so tiny and carries so well. This thing, it's not overly lightweight. For its size, it's actually kind of heavy because of this all steel construction like this, but it's tiny, so it doesn't weigh hardly anything. And in a fifth pocket, it's even more comfortable than the Rentley is. In my waistband, super comfortable. Back pocket, super comfortable. Wherever I tuck this knife, it is just one of the most comfortable knives that I have to carry because it's really small, but it's not so small that it's impractical too, which is probably the best part about all of that. Like the size and frame of this knife is actually very usable. This blade is plenty of length to do most EDC tasks that I would ask of a secondary, if not any task that I would ask of a secondary knife. If I happened to be carrying this as a primary and it was the only knife on me, I'd still probably be fine. This is a great blade shape with a total usable amount of belly, a good tip. It's ground super well and sharpened really, really well. I'm, I'm really impressed with the way that this blade came together. It's full flat ground and it's a nice, reasonable stock. It's not so thin that I'm worried about fragility. It's got a decent tip on it. And it's just that full flat grind takes it down to a nice thinness behind the edge where it's it's reasonable. As, as an actual user knife to pull out and cut things, this as small knives go, makes a really good case for itself as being one of the best in my opinion. It's just a really, really good small cutter. So yeah, my first impressions are obviously very, very positive on this guy. It's just, it's really executed well. And I'm, I'm just floored that Finch, their first knife, I kind of fell in love with. And I just kind of stumbled into it because I ordered one from River's Edge Cutlery just to try out. I'd seen them kind of in my peripheral. I'd seen a couple of people do some reviews and people seemed to be saying positive things. I'd seen some photos of them and it just looked quirky and different and like something I hadn't tried before. And I'm stoked that I got one and tried it because now the Tycoona is awesome too. And this one, I I might like it more than the Yellow Belly. I don't know. Time will tell. I, I really, it's hard for me to say that because I love the Runley so much, but this is just, it makes a lot of sense to me for... <sighs> the type of knife that I'd carry as a secondary. And so far, all of my finches have been secondary knives and this one carries the best. And it's just, it's so usable, it's so approachable, and it's fresh for me. I, if you have watched my collection video, I'm actually gonna do an updated one soon as well, but I don't keep traditional knives around. I don't, I don't really have interest in them. I don't like slip joints that they're probably the one lock type. I like less than back locks. In fact, it's not even a lock type, they're non-locking knives. Like slip joints, I just, I don't have interest in them. And for that reason, most traditionals are either slip joints or back locks, and it precludes me from wanting pretty much any of them. Maybe I'll give a slip joint another try here soon. I'll get something that's compelling in that arena and, and we'll see how it goes. But I just, I prefer knives that are fun to play with that lock up in ways that are easy to manipulate with one hand and are familiar to me. And so this being a bolster lock, essentially a frame lock and being tiny, but still on bearings and having a flipper tab, like this is the most traditional looking knife I own but it's really just like the costume it's wearing. It just looks like a traditional knife, but I still get all the all the modern features and comforts and amenities of modern knives. So I really dig it. It works great for me. It's awesome in any grip. It's awesome at cutting. It's got means to choke up. 
it's like, I want to whittle with this knife. I'm going to be doing some whittling with this knife because the profile and the way it works, uh, I can't imagine that this would suffer in any way as like a, an actual whittling knife, which is really cool. It feels like it's true to its nature of kind of being like grandpa's Barlow. And I don't know, I just dig it. I'm really, I'm really happy with it so far. So still got a few more days to go. It's probably going to be about a week and then I'll do my full review on this. Um, we'll see if I can get to a testing video as well. I've got way too much stuff that I need to shoot right now, guys. It is insane. And there's more stuff on the way too, which is trying to stay ahead of it, but it means three to four videos posted a day, which means if I can only shoot every other day or so, I'm shooting like eight or nine videos in a day. And uh, it's quite the pace to keep up with. I'm so far I'm I'm doing it, but if it's a little over a week on some of these, you will have to forgive me. Plus, in order to have the time to put these knives in my pocket, when I have like 10 knives that I need to review and I'm trying to spend like a week with each of them, at least packing in some experiences, carrying them for part of the day, I'm finding myself carrying uh, like switching knives several times in the day and keeping it in pocket long enough to like find a cutting task to do with it, feel how it does in pocket. And like, <laughs> even with rotating knives, it's hard to find the time in the day to carry and use all these knives right now, which is like first world problems, right? But if it takes a little over a week, all I'm saying is don't be mad. Don't judge me. This being a secondary should be a little easier on that front because I've got more primary knives right now that are begging for pocket time. So anyway, this has been my first impressions on the Finch 1929. This particular one is in Coca-Bolo and the carbon fiber one is going to be the one that I'm giving away. So be on the lookout for that as well. By the time this goes live, that video might be live. I don't know. We will see. But there's a giveaway <laughs> about to come. So Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And thank you again to Finch for sending this knife along. I'm going to link down in the description to their Instagram and their website. That way, if you're interested in this or any of their models, you can check them out there. Really, really cool guys behind Finch. They are an awesome knife company, which is new and finding its way. And they're off to a fantastic start. So check them out. And uh, yeah, this has been a cool one. I'll talk to you guys soon.